So, another late night Linux development stuff here. Let's see zero frames. Um, as usual, already did quite some stuff because if I do everything live, it is uh, way too boring, obviously. Um, found a couple of stuff uh, that we probably, okay, maybe I don't better as we up here. Uh, but in other news, new stable kernel is out. 5 to 16, which did I update this already? I guess not. Uh, what? No, this is also the YouTube thing here. The wonders of X11 cut and paste. So, yeah, only live on this channel, all the live updates. Also, welcome, Danny. Um, evening, everyone. Good evening. Bonsoir. Um, also, our recurring theme here, how much stuff was also not merged, but only live we search for the wrong term. Reverted. So, as usual, oops, yeah, reverted. Uh, is it the first one only live on this channel? Failing to use search properly. Um, our recurring theme here, monolithic kernel on the amazing administrative work at the Linux kernel. Of course, reverted here in 5.2.16, because why should there not still be regressions to revert kvm x86 slash mmu reintroduce fast invalidated zap for flushing mem slot. Um, that was introduced by commit so on so on. The live log occurs because and so on exists today will voluntarily reschedule yada yada yada. Um, that was news at the time of revert commit something. Maybe I should also only search for revert and not reverting because there were more. Reverting Bluetooth also we had this before reverting Bluetooth driver to enable USB wake up feature, commit cost regressions, notebooks that support suspend to idle such as XPS. 93, whatever, um, reverting as x86 per purgatory. Change compiler flex from MC model equals kernel to MC model large to fix kx relocation because why should someone ever fix uh, test kx stuff before release? Last change to this make file cost relocation errors when loading relocation, of course, this references to jumps to uh, variable addresses and such as we have probably seen with Musil and other wherever I've mentioned this before probably also time to make a dedicated video about how relocation stuff works um, to freestanding and no zero initialized BSS without reverting to the former practice of resetting and so on with the previous change, the uh, compiler flex the error kxec overflow and relocation type 11. So yeah, it's not only that our unsuccessful T2 stuff is usually broken, um, it's also all the other stuff. Yeah, also time to update this. And yeah, so do we, uh, maybe we are professionals, maybe we better t t test build this because always when I don't test build this, this fails. Um, in T2, all right, I should have done that here. That is one data center, that is the other office and so on. So a little bit, by the way, what do I even show here? Is it even visible? Evening all, another day, another release year, exactly. Recurring and, uh, and not only release, but um, regression. Because what would be the Linux kernel without some proper regressions? And certainly we not only live update, but live test them here. Uh, also SVN up for a second and can also probably commit this early, build, reference, pencil pro, whatever, something more ADM, that is native 5 Linux. Let's see if this, I probably commit this if it starts compiling and all the T2 patches of which there, yeah, okay, this is to decompression, decompressing, maybe not in tempfs, data center server is aging. Um, what I've done in a second, we also saw today not too long. So, okay, this build on the Office Ryzen. I still, by the way, as usual, every day I checked AMD uh, Ryzen 3950X availability, still not listed anywhere, at least earlier this afternoon. 
Uh, hello, can you also uncompress um, some more? Yeah, the Xeon data center performance is lagging. I actually only wanted to SVN up this because I wanted to. Yeah, all those changes are from the office and uh, portable road warrior here. Uh, ceiling, postpone, postpone. Okay, fine. Um, so is this, yeah, so this um, is patched. We have a couple of hot fixes there in T2, not too much because we don't patch our kernels to death like other successful projects. So just the most, although our stuff, at least on PowerPC, we have the P3 stuff. On MIPS, we have MIPS64, we have the Octane stuff also getting a little bit out of hand. Um, all the lovely patches upstream. It's not the most interested in. Comments in the audience. Speaking of kernel, have you ever tried the CK patch set? No, I haven't in quite some time. Comments in the audience is using them. Seems great for desktop use. Yeah, I heard this, um, but I'm already busy enough with all the other more serious stuff. But cool that you tested this. This kind of data points always appreciated. So this starts compiling. That is good for me because uh, this Linux kernel developers certainly are professionals. So we certainly can trust to commit this. I updated this because I wanted to show you what have we done today because our web view is outdated. Our web view is only updated two times a day. So a couple of updates uh, today, FreeGlut Tor. And also, more seriously, I've done major stuff to our mkinitrd stuff that each distribution has its own mkinitrd stuff, although there might be some generic stuff in the meantime, but a decade ago there wasn't. Uh, we have rolled our own most minimal stuff that I'm quite happy with. Today I spent too much time because I recently tweaked it for the Muselipsy that behaved a little bit different with more exotic sim linking there that our, our tribal shell code wasn't prepared for. So two months or so I adapted this a little bit for Musel specific Lipsy dynamic libraries, shared object gathering, and that broke regular glipsy. Of course, we are professionals. We also break stuff like other professionals. So today I improved this, but I, I also improved this vastly. So previously we copied, for example, if a binary like UDEF or a crypt setup, crypto setup needed libc, we, we included all libcs that might be two on a multi-lib system like AMD64 with i386 compatibility because we did not check which match, we just copied all of them, which could be two, also on PowerPC or MIPS. Um, today I finally also tweaked this that we only copy the matching uh, machine architecture. Um, also, uh, there were some more fine tuning, um, optimized some printing, some, um, some warning only once. I also worked on the, um, I think this was that. I also worked on the boot stuff. So conditionalize this, let's build. Oh, wait a second, this was too early. We need to run target for yeah I to rebuild um, the kernel because also here from the builds last night um, because of a int rd um, yeah right my, my magic chick was actually not um, perfect and thanks god we are professionals and I didn't commit it yet um, otherwise I would had to fix the commit actually I think I committed this already right um, yeah this was just that yeah, just committed this a minute minute ago. Um, so for the x86 64, this is now defaulting to EFI. Um, and so ISO, create ISO that, create ISO that. And yeah, that is why we need 64 gigs of memory and an Ryzen. Um, we can theoretically QEMU test uh, the first one here. That would be i386 no graphic. As uh, the only thing, because we run this on on an SSH without X, uh, SSH tunneling or whatever, we run here no graphics and then console equals TT. Oops. Mm, also, editing sometimes a little bit strange here with uh, QEMU console stuff. So console equals ttyf0, that should probably work, let's see. Because um, the last time I tried this a couple of minutes ago, that was not uh, including the libc um, due to my proof of concept test stuff. Let's see if uh, now it does something, yeah, it's the stupid floppy. Um, 
I'm actually not even sure why I included so also yeah a little bit of a regression I made this more intelligent and that was working quite well like picking the first removable stuff usually worked here well intelligent of using the first removable block device but I recently added floppy there back in there I have actually no idea really why um, I did this maybe I was thinking for this vintage retro tinkering and now the problem is alphabetically sorted or something the floppy driver is the first which is slightly annoying um, yeah so I need to improve this but the good thing is in my opinion it's slightly more convenient to improve the logic here in shell code than always doing this in C code so let's oh this was the wrong one only live on YouTube choosing the wrong one yeah so that looks better previously that did not work and um, yeah we actually okay let's try the low memory one uh, can't find has been in it what what right yeah we might be out of memory let's actually kill Uh, where did I last kill? Maybe here. Um, whatever the default of QMO might be, apparently super low, was it? Um, let's use one gig and also one sits it way here. So let's do that again. Only here live on YouTube comes so equals TTYS0. Ah, again, works with enter anyway. Um, the if you want, you probably can test yourself then. Uh, which box the kernel breaks the modules for what? Welcome, Richard. Um, I heard heads up for use of which box the kernel breaks the modules. What do you mean with that? You mean the guest modules broke or something, or they removed? Anyway, I'm not the greatest fan of virtual box. The code quality wasn't the most amazing. Um, yeah, so probably previously most likely did only not work because out of memory. Uh, why is this so slow though? Or did I, wait a second, did I? Um, this might be so slow, yeah. <laughs> only live on this channel, let's kill this here. Yeah, I didn't enable KVM, so this was running in software that explains why it was so. Only live on this channel doing this five times, but all the details that you learn and see the difference. And um, host modules, yeah, uh, so you mean as accidentally breaking as aka regressions as per usual or some we just break some because we think we should. Yeah, this certainly, there you see the difference be between unaccelerated and, uh, by the way, fun fact, I improved this, you see this defaults to TTY as zero, um, because I improved this for probably working on the MIP64 and HPPA risk. Um, that always was annoying because previously, uh, the last decades until recently, so this is another amazing improvement that this amazing YouTube live streams brought, working on this vintage stuff, that this takes a console equal something here. This, and in my opinion, uh, it's really nice to script this installer logic stuff with shell logic. Um, although, yeah, shell not the most amazing language, but at least you can edit it nicely. So, um, yes, theoretically we could try, so yeah, graphics is off because serial console, goodness, uh, I didn't even boot with, nah. Um, anyway, it starts working, let's kill it away and probably rsync here locally, then we can start it with graphics. I only wanted to test if it mostly has a chance to work, where would be my, maybe this one, let's rsync this again. Um, let's hope it doesn't leak an IP address that should go over IPv6 and yeah I should even use additionally VPN but another day. So yeah rsync my favorite tool. Um, welcome Detard. Yes I still need to drop you an email. Um, it seems something trivial. They don't compile. Okay. Um, yeah welcome everyone to today not as long as boring. Um, actually, okay. Uh, by the way, fun fact: the build also broke in a couple of other ways. Actually, our I changed to Python three by default. The Python three package didn't create a Python sim link, so a couple of stuff didn't build there. I fixed that. Um, also, some other glib and other small glitches. Um, some I manually just tweaked. Um, glibff 
EI or FFI. I also worked around a little bit there. Uh, let's see what have we done with here. Musil. Let's maybe. So um, the T2 trunk is now in much better shape, uh, not yet totally perfect because there's always so many regressions. So if you build this yourself, there might be some small trivial stuff. So that is if you run this then with graphic. If anyone in the audience zoom to fit could tell me because I've not run EFI stuff on regular PC stuff too much, would the OMF uh, way something? The Tiano Core EFI BIOS OM OMKF oh, whatever. Too busy today. Um, would this boot from CDs because the trivial EFI image I generated does not instantly boot? Oh, wait a second, this was booting the musical stuff. That is the wrong. Did I not boot D or. Ah, oh, this is also the wrong ESO, obviously, if you want to boot. This is the EFI ISO that obviously yeah, that looks better. Um, because then I would need to test this in. Uh, three and that. Only test on real hardware like my Mac here or something. Zoom to fit, obviously. So let's test if this is ins installation again. Um, just a quick walkthrough, but uh, it's totally minimal, simple. And yeah, again, I know it's not perfect, but we are an unsuccessful one man team here, which, uh, fun fact, is a running gig. Um, edit partition map, whatever, it's already edited. Let's just create a new file system with whatever. Maybe that here doesn't really matter too much. Let's try to install nothing too interesting here. That should just work, I hope, if I didn't break something today. And let me just check what we show here on screen. That looks mostly okay. Um, Detard managed to break his plan 9 VM today and had to use good old add to fix it. Uh, that's interesting, pretty sure. Add stands for extremely difficult. Um, I think add stands for editor, no? <laughs> but yeah, I get what you mean. Um, actually, well, this is interesting. Look at that. The other, so you see regressions, it's not always our T2's crappy T2 fault because in the Musil build, actually, I said the etcf step file was empty. Uh, it, well, it wasn't empty, just that the dialog stuff didn't show it. So maybe this is Musil specific. There you see, it's not always our T2 stuff. It's sometimes also just miscompiled or C library or whatever, one set or the other. And you see um, that, uh, let's use test as per usual, that works. You see the time zones here are populated with, this was only a Musil thing that we need to check another day. You see so many details to take care of if you do the non-standard stuff. Berlin, time, whatever. And also the locales I set with Musil, normally they are full here with whatever because local dev whatever that is glibc specific. Um, also all the details. So it's not like broken in T2 that works since decades. Didn't touch the code in 15 years or something. So no local, um, no grub here. Um, let's do okay. So, this is also interesting. Um, I said I couldn't really reproduce this. Maybe we fixed something, not really sure because this time uh, the grub2 config. And yes, I read the comments and thanks for testing. Um, still need to fine tune that. Actually, this MS DOS, wait a second, is this what kind of? Ah, oh, right, this is actually, I oh know this is okay. This is this could actually just work completely, probably. The so only thing that we need to tweak next is. Uh, EFI, um, and that is what the, the x86, the AMD64 um, image is for. Actually, this is funny. So this escape stuff is a new regression upstream of whatever that is not usual specific. And this could theoretically, so yeah, relatively uh, simple um, in my opinion. And the other image I can't really test too much now because I switched it to EFI and that doesn't just boot here. But I probably will just publish it. I can't test everything, maybe I'll let Danny then to play with it. Um, I think it could work. Um, the build procedure, let, let's hope I control seat the right thing and not OBS. Yeah, it apparently did. Um, let's switch this to boot C, that should then just boot. All ah, right, um, except, wait a second, did we not? 
Um, well, it, did I not change this? Did I not? Why is this not? Hmm, did I not run SVN up? Maybe that was on another machine. Okay, with small stuff, then well, then this has one. I have too much. Oops, it was also the wrong full screen. Um, uh, can you also? No, I. Uh, because full screen is here to displays wide for OBS streaming. Obviously, I still really like my new improved init style stuff. And yeah, relatively, um, there is always uh, some warning there, invalid argument of RC can't reset signal. Actually, okay, this could be, yeah, this I might have done this recently, but whatever, there are two warnings. Um, so there's invalid argument, oh, this is still, oh, okay, this RC stuff. I recently had to change this due to Musil. Um, that should be GLIPC though. Let's see if that, oh, not test. Wait, why does this? Not hmm. so much too. I'm happy that it boots and then doesn't allow you to log in. Fun stuff. Uh, there's always some crap. Um, I took this off. I will test it. That is cool. Thank you very much. Um, what do you mean with if you require some extra settings in the kernel? We should have all the settings. Well, if the settings should be in there. I'm if you booting this forever. Um, ah, crap, why does this not allow? Why is there always some crap? It's hilarious. Why must there always. Nah. Why is there always something broken? It's zone to fit, maybe. <sighs> Send control alt. Is there not somewhere? Okay, then reset, I guess. So to debug this, um, not that I would be the most motivated out. So we need to. Init equals. In bash maybe. Hmm. Step allows kernel booting without loader. Uh, mixed to allow 64-bit kernel, 32-bit loader. If he was, it requires to modify the ify setting. Um, mixed is to low. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, the most options are there, and I boot this already. I only wonder now how should we maybe in it s um, what should this not be uh, I should maybe I should have put it with in it um, let's try s bin in it s okay, but this works um, Okay, so the test password stuff is there, the login stuff is there. Um, yeah, so, um, so you can spend all your time. I, I really soon want to get into writing more modern code mode. So this is basically polishing before we switch to um, calling this release season and three eight four zero zero TTY to Linux. Hmm. Why is there always something wrong? Hmm. Socket, close exit. Exit log in. No such file a directory. What 
the heck? Yeah, there is no bin login. Does Shadow not provide a uh, login? Are you kidding me? <sighs> Welcome to my life 2019 and you still have such strange regressions like that. Change route, build x86, 9. But there is a bin login. list why <sighs> is this in the if list for x86 Do they use a new system call to write this or what? Let's see, do we have comments in the audience? Uh, so basically I have to compile Blackbox myself to use GUI. Um, yes, theoretically also T2 in scripts don't like root equals um, Maybe not, but you can use um, also kernel to be booted without loader. Um, what I use is um, dev. I didn't see a point to add this extra functionality if you can just use is it block by uh, by what would it be? something by id um, and you get the idea we can take a look another day i first need to find out why <sighs> But maybe we should use, uh, maybe we should change all our bootloader integration glue to mount by UUID indeed. Actually, I am on my machines, I use this already mostly for encrypted root file systems anyway. Ah, grab MK image, yeah. So, Shadow, what did Shadow do there?
Ah, wait a second, not init login. Here it installs here, lib tool install. Ah, user bin install. Well, what the heck? Or oh, maybe we translate this. Maybe this is a shadow package regression if it really installed somewhere else. Not recently updated, so in a long time. Hmm. Probably upstream moved this to somewhere, huh? or package shadow Debian. Uh, maybe no proper upstream side anyway. Okay, then not recent regression except what fixed for Musil, what was that? <coughs> okay, just a patch. <laughs> I said it will not be such a long light and then as you look in or look in somehow that is really not in there. Let's double check at x64. It's in bin locked in though. Um, I wonder how many other packages are not. Hmm. No, I guess we have this file list tracker. Maybe we need to also implement a more reliable sandbox strategy than nowadays. I suspect it's using new system calls for whatever and our F list wrapping stuff is our dynamic loading, preloading stuff is not catching those maybe. So this failed intentionally with my hook at a board. And um, let's take a look in this FL, FL wrapper write log. A user bin login. Why is this a uh, move rename? Bash move rename. S bin login. Why is it not in there then? Uh, wait a second, there is bin login. Why is it in there now? Hmm. That is fun stuff fix itself hmm. hmm not really sure what went on there but hmm Act 
actually the full reference build has a tracking of files it's performing a very long search and sanity checking that all files are archived in packages but i have the feeling that might not be enabled for config x86 um, packages maybe not for yeah also debug obviously KDE no not uh, this is not called debug base debug mm. ah, final okay fine maybe fine ninety nine final Yeah, that is not enabled there. Maybe we should add this to the target generic package selection bootstrap maybe add this here together with 00, zero dear tree and see what that is. Oh, also we need to remove this a board out of there yep but it's cool that so many people are watching i mean very theoretically um it would be really cool our oh, christian welcome um what's everyone up to here yeah, we are up to i'm up to testing the final images oh, final final of course as always finding some bugs um also, I tested already the EFI image that could be EFI. Um, maybe I will test it then locally after the live stream. I have to tested it in the OM, oh, Tiano Core, this is the naming here. We had this yesterday, right? Um, that was Tiano Core OF, yeah, Open Virtual Machine Framework. Framework. Uh, yeah, names. So then let's maybe build this. Who will, wait a second, do we have, it's better rebuilds, I'm not sure if I just rebuild this for x6. Then let's see what this is, 99 final. I hope 99 final had this mode of unarchived packages. Uh, files, just to double check, not that I think now everything should finally be okay. Um, for everyone else and Danny, um, comments in the audience, wrestling with cross-compilation toolchain that uses GCC and Musil. Yeah, that works in T2. Maybe you want to join the dark side here and join the T2 stuff because at least, um, well, at least, okay, actually, I, wait a second, GCC Musil. I think GCC Musil should be, um, Uh, more working um, and undoing writes a base 32 plus 32 decoder right now along with the encoder with this week okay that um, cool that everyone is up to their stuff ah one one alt backspace too many let's see what this 99 final is finding there and um, it was quick. Maybe let's already less build sixty four lock ninety nine final actually not looked into. Wait a second, what did I even know? This is also the wrong. Wait a second, why has this not done much? Long time I looked into this debug output. This 
This package contains fun relation applied to a specific target possible contents are images prepared. Oh, okay, that is not what I wanted then. But while we are at it, I wanted to deprecate this main function stuff. So make op equals nothing and actually we can make this in one line and make inst opt equals nothing might. Let's see if that also builds and we can remove another cost main. 99 final. So much to knowing your own packages when other people worked on this also and you can't remember each code line anymore because too many. Let's see. Browsing for a good game on stream. Um, yeah, that is also welcome on Linux or Windows. Musil is good for that. Too bad GCC is so tied to shared libs. Yeah, to get right, wrestling with ECU binary in. Um, which ECU binary are you working on, Christian? That is very curious. Can't auto detect source tar. Um, how can we disable source tar? Uh, maybe just source. Okay, let's better grab this. Source star equals nothing, maybe. Very special package. Uh, also, best without a stray dollar. Yeah, very specific package disabling all the automatics and uh, just doing nothing in the default case anyway, in case you overload this with your target specific finalization stuff. Source star command not found that I forgot an equal sign there only here live on. Still wonder what the debug, so then we can remove this, this was wrong. Um, maybe anyway, Let's, ah, oh, there T2 debug. Why did I overlook this earlier? Then it's T2, maybe we should move T2 debug to, anyway. Long time not used, target generic, uh, generic shared, shared. Um, debug, do we have T2 debug? No, we had, had t not in any other. Then let's see what happens now with a maybe potentially correct debug package in there. And ECU, so let's see, comments in the audience, anyone interested? This is a project working on right now called Glaucus, somewhat circular Linux distribution built from scratch. Um, recapping a Toshi bar and figuring out which backlight inverter board is dead. Cool stuff. Figured out how to calculate keys from security access, but the request download is wired. Interesting stuff. Okay, this also didn't get what I wanted. So that is Bosch something. Do you do this recurrently or does anyone here remember know about E in it? Uh, not sure, maybe not. Um, this 
circular space and open with dbase user and build an LTO so it's then compressed fun stuff um are in it what what could that have been anyway um so do you work on ecus more often or is it a one and why do you do this that is really interesting maybe something i could use for myself or adm log final let's see what happens here oh wait a second this wasn't final we wanted what did i even build here ah this was the wrong one only here live debug we want too much reading of uh, too much reading the comments here. Um, in it, so T two. Debug not, no job matches, 99. Um, maybe by default this only wants to build in stage 9, yeah, it wants, damn it. Um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, okay. System. I once interfaced a Lotus Exige instrument cluster to an EVEA drive stream using a Arduino. That was fun. You guys also work on cool project. That certainly sounds like fun. So let's see. So this could actually this is also using cast main. Uh, by the way, did I? Okay. So this 99 final might have worked now. So commit this final without cast main. I'll port it 99 final and, uh, um, from 99 final remove use of customer from 99 final so that is that the debug also run uh, what else did we just do Let's see if that found errors, duplicate binary names. Uh, there would be the error output. No one hook preconfistel. So long not done this. Found errors, binaries in, linear around, found errors. Um, and where are the errors now? Test with that one T2 debug. Ah, uh, here are the debug stuff. RVDM is the debug. Which target did I run this for? X86. that is still referencing checksums or what that is uh, okay only live on this channel I wanted to make it a short stream and then this comes to the other so yeah, source tar. So the new style is make opt zero. 
rule, uh, empty make inst opt empty and um, by the way, source that probably also works with nothing, I hope, and hook at in make, for example, oh, sorry, name this, probably rd stands for rock debug or something, it's not rock Linux anymore, debug should, probably should do, ah, and we have checksums, it probably not in there but in here check some test empty check some here we want then the new md5 sum which we should also upgrade to something else sometime soon Let's try to build that again. So, comes with audience. Um, Canvas is fun, yeah. Which protocol was it using? Canvas. Uh, presume that it's what it had due to Arduino, with can Kayla and most people connect to them in course. The dash cluster is used 10, 10ms. Um, TNMS status frame, the standard 8 bytes contained all the info, scan, oh, and I just grabbed some status from the DSG gearbox to see the parking brake and get the gear number and such. Few le levels in the tool, just a port, port meter. Um, cool stuff indeed, um, only here live in this comments. Um, so let's uh, also less the lock should be slightly more clean now no warnings to hooks here no warnings to hooks anymore and um, maybe we commit this already t2 debug find md5 sums and cast mainless maybe disable the We don't really need that too importantly right now. Maybe actually revert the whole. Actually, we can change this from Rock Linux to SDE. Debug information, collective recompilation, the distribution, don't install it except you really know what to do. So then, D2 debug. Sixty two debug to search MD five sounds instead of remove the check sounds remove cost use of cost main and updated text. So, uh, the channel is such a cool place to hang out that meeting interesting people and learn new stuff here. Yeah, definitely, um, definitely need this Canva stuff though for my <coughs> countrymen or other fun stuff, certainly. So, um, uh, by the way, fun fact, um, speaking about this, our mini countryman is running QNX, right? So, Log mini QNX because this, of course there was there was only one software, software update for this entertainment thing, and of course I had to uh, poke it, uh, take it a little bit apart. So 
uh, that was some update something here linked on my blog and some nice elf binaries and tar stuff and I really wish I would have had more time um, so yet some tar stuff also I mean each normal developer would name this like summary something whatsoever but they named it in German like only German car manufacturers name their bloody files Beschreibungstabelle like yeah seriously um, and then phone tar and MME tar and th those tars had um, nice little files so I'm a little bit tempted to hack this QNX another day so if you want me to go into car hacking um, would be really fun to poke some custom shared object stuff there to this QNX apparently according to the file naming stuff and um, yeah, maybe disassemble the also did I post the link, yeah, apparently I did. Um, yeah, in, in a way cool that my car runs in microkernel stuff, just that I really wish it would be more hackable. For example, I really hate uh, the small stuff that the zooming, there is some jog dial thing. And in my opinion, the zooming is reverse. Probably this is the British royal system, the imperial unit system that you turn probably in most stuff like microwaves and whatsoever, most turning dials, you turn them right clockwise for increasing stuff. And in the, so intuitively to zoom in into the navigation, I always turn it right. And I think the zoom out of it, probably something of that sort. I so wish to just, um, and the stuff that would be so cool if it would be like JavaScript or Lua or whatever. Um, it would be so cool if you could tweak you the small stuff that drive you crazy. Um, and yeah, I know some Mazdas like the MX-5 run Linux in the entertainment system and people change the background with secure shelling into them, which I don't have though, but maybe you could secure shell into this QNX. It, in my opinion, people modify their cars, some fake carbon fiber or whatsoever stuff. And I would, the small thing that drives you crazy for seven years that the navigation always zooms in the reverse direction so yeah um, did I uh, if you want to mess around with the canvas on your mini you can help here the problem is uh, the, the visit the stop over it you turns from a overnight to a, a week long stay right of, of hacking on and stuff uh, did I post this I think I posted it anyway um, yeah so hacking this um, I don't really feel our Mini is in relatively good shape, so I don't really want to disassemble it. But um, if we reach a couple of 10,000 subscribers, maybe just for the education in front of it, disassemble the navigation control unit there and dump the hard drive. And um, not really sure, did I file or I think it was... Um, x86 or arm um, i'm not actually not don't remember if i filed or magic i'm not really sure if that was x86 or arm so um, i wish i remember but yeah you guessed it maybe is this still to download there on this side sorry something went wrong yeah of course after seven years they Moved this. I hope I still have the file though. Um, maybe if we Google for this. Latest Bluetooth update here is something. Connected drive. Um, is this the same link? This doesn't. Yeah, making advertisement for, no, not that, anyway. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you got the idea. So that is 2018, here is some, it's funny that, so they did BMW 3 Series in 2019, they name it the same. So, mm. So apparently the file name is the same for all kind of QNX based systems, I guess. Only here live on this channel, but we wanted to finish our T2 stuff, didn't we? Um, and where would be the file download? 
uh, whatever you get the idea. Yeah, so um, this debug stuff, we actually wanted to take a look. Um, no, nobody's too late here uh, about the EU thing. Yeah, that's what I tend to do, but this is my first PC based ECU only messed with. So you usually work on ECUs, or what? Do I understand that correctly? That immediately becomes a very interesting nightly uh, channel here, actually. Um, color me vastly interested in this topic. So build, um, probably as soon I need to make a tour through Europe and stop and YouTube studio and each and every um, subscriber location. So build, I probably built that here, that was that here, var SDE debug, let's see if we now got D2 debug. Um, or maybe I should also rename the package from T2 debug anyway. No, no renaming today. Let's see what uh, unarchived. So how many, okay, some old stuff is, so how much stuff is unarchived? Okay, so quite some stuff. Okay, the logs, I mean, the logs are okay. Okay, Tuchin, actually there are quite some false positives in there. I've not looked into this for a really long time. The log files are also okay. Um, why are the caches un are the caches not in the okay? Maybe this is not sure. Maybe this is okay. Whatever. Um, so this stuff is a little bit yeah, maybe not okay, but not for today. Okay, some RPC bind also. Okay, this is somewhat okay. I okay. This means this this pie cache I just have done intentionally. We need to take a look at this another day. Um, so some old stuff is also okay, although it doesn't really need to be there. Um, yeah, this is also stupid that this installs users. So it's mostly some old stuff, some... Actually, this is funny that some diet libs include stuff is not archived, but not nothing too serious. Okay, so just a couple of old stuff. Okay, add is not okay though, but whatever. Oh, maybe I moved, did I move this? Okay, this, this is from NVI. I can live with this. So, okay, looks like maybe this was the only serious one, I guess. Um, although we probably should fix the packages not to leak old files. Um, and this RPC mount, why would that be? Maybe we also rebuild this for a test that is from NFS something or... RPC mount or ADM of list uh, NFS utils. Yeah, then let's rebuild NFS utils and hope for the best. Nothing better than some automated debug testing tools. Oh, yeah, that's a cool donation. Thank you for um, that super chat thing there. Should be try messing around. In T2 might be fun here. Um, all patches welcome. Um, but one thing is for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, thank, thank you everyone for watching and uh, super chatting and stuff. And one thing is for sure the first um, huge spike of recurring T2 activity came after the Snowden papers when I figured, okay, can't trust anything. Need to go back to my own self reliance here, digital self reliance. And um, the second then, of course, came also with YouTube or failing Apple hardware that I don't even want to use it anymore. But the more major spike here was all the YouTube content because since then, uh, re rediffed, rebased all the MIPS stuff, um, MIPS, PowerPC, even P3. Um, certainly, huge amounts of work there, mostly on non T2 but kernel related stuff. And then people even donating me the Hewlett Packard. PA risk stuff that I didn't even ever had on my radar to do. Um, let's see if this is archived now. Build x86 and uh, our ADMF list NF NFS utils. Hello. So mount. So there is some RPC stuff. Okay, this is an S bin. What was the 
debug thing saying? So that was SDE debug. Um, that was. By the way, we could maybe look into the empty files. Or did I not rerun this? I thought I had rerun this. Anyway, let's look into the. Where is the unarchived RPC? Of course, this didn't update. Okay, this. Uh, we have not rerun this, but this was this file. Should we maybe. Rerun this T2 debug. You know what? Maybe I just okay. Okay, let's not start unnecessarily renaming. Um, um, yeah, I still have uh, another to give away, right? So if someone preferably close to me because it's more heavy than the Sun Ultra 5, I still have. Although I saw I've, I wanted to force someone in Berlin to take it. Um, this what was it? The visualize that I. I was first gifted, not the big visualize that I have here, um, this 300, 260 something, but it doesn't have working graphic though. Um, compiling kernel with ceiling source, even more stupid than this risk 5 c compiler from scratch, which is what I'm doing right now, cool stuff. Um, T2 for the most people, I would guess, mostly interesting for vintage hardware or MIPS. PA risk stuff and alternative C library stuff. Why did this not uh, no fail? Oh, wait, wait a second. Ah, also, this was not the right target I wanted. What, why does it fail now? Ah, no job because we commented it out again anyway. Um, let's. So we have rebuilt this. Let's quickly take a look in. Before NFS utils, not that it's most important, but just RPC. Okay, so let's rebuild Shadow here just to be sure because I'm not sure if I rebuilt it for both. And tar this back together. So that would be also maybe target chair. Wait a second, target generic package cell, remove the Debugging out of there again. Hmm. Then one final run. Let's hope that fixes the login. Um, should we? That would be my that would be that. In it equals I'll be just so probably to do it are also now this Oh, wait a second, maybe we, as we already rebuilding like crazy, maybe we actually rebuild drop. As we already do so much late last minute fix up, as we in our package. And drop two. Hmm. It's already latest. You name and ah, oh, you know what? This doesn't work because there is a X in there. Uh, fun stuff. Did I commit this already? And of course, I did. Yeah. Okay, job five, got two. So, comments in the audience. Um, risk five, yeah, by the way, we also continue with risk five. Uh, thanks for becoming a uh, Patreon. Much appreciated. Um, I understand this is not the most amazing content and of course yesterday two more people unsubscribed because this um, amazing 
work at night certainly too boring for most people but um, I need to do the work anyway and I just want to document how much time it is to just when people think why do you not spin ISO images more often yeah each time I do there's something broken and probably 80% of the bugs are not directly caused by me changing something just like upstream whatever and then testing and so on but um, yeah next I set this the next promise I set this again the next people script this again on this amazing new powerful virtual machine stuff and um, have probably monthly or maybe maybe weekly or monthly maybe weekly generic no maybe weekly is too often but we will see at least monthly um, actually also scripting we have already the automatic update tracker but next is test building this I said this already before that actually I have never done before we have the nightly update tracker and I had previously weekly ISO builder already a decade ago on the 8 core dual socket Mac Pro there um, but we will re-automate this so weekly builds or something monthly builds and also for the first time ever scripting directly test building those changes so scanning FTP HTTP servers and then Right now we get an email notification and next will be then test building like glib update, gtk update. Um, test building, does it, does, is, a, is a version number a stable pattern, like not uneven or whatever, uh, or uh, uh, uneven, odd, not odd or whatever. And um, then test build it and if it test build, then uh, directly commit it um, and even take more of our a burden here of, of this yeah basically fully automating like like not this unsuccessful pseudo automation stuff of oracle but really amazing automated linux stuff um so let's build this iso here again so that and us, uh, no, and that and um another thing i wanted um, i will most likely make a dedicated video about this as we have here already quite some people in the audience if you want to save some energy because it's Friday for future, right? What I started to do increasingly is I started to experiment with suspending servers to memory um, for energy saving. So um, if you if you have some automated builds and um, it's of course a little bit stability wise, you of course you need to test this really, not that you suspend to memory and after a couple of suspends you have some data corruption, certainly not cool, but otherwise just suspend your servers like at night or whatever. Um, and also the next thing, what I started to do increasingly, but I, again, dedicated video, um, all the fun stuff and ideas we have here. Also wake your stuff automatically, like if you have a couple of boxes for your virtual machine and file server and all the fun stuff, goodness, um, suspend them to memory and wake them up with magic ethernet packets. Um, I started to do this for quite some time already. And, um, that works quite well. Fun fact, uh, this Ryzen here was woken up uh, for this work here in the office before it was, but this was shut down completely. Um, and um, yeah, just some ideas, but I will make a dedicated video about this fun stuff. Just that uh, if, what can you do? Yeah, you can um, save quite some energy on servers, but yeah, test this for stability. Um, one atom based NAS stuff I've um, run already on suspend to memory for, probably a year now um, and uh, yeah with, without an issue so far and uh, those the other the other big machines of number crunching VMs I don't suspend to memory I shut down completely and wake them up if you don't mind the boot time this might be the more stable way to avoid data corruption of suspend to memory of all the um, bit flipping uh, magic that can go wrong there um, so that let's rebuild that and then or then that over here of probably that that one r zinc those isos over and then what other comments do we have in the audience oh that um depend. let's see do we have so many comments in the audience a risk. Um, wonder if ceiling has the ability to further optimize the kernel size. It would be nice to kernel size 
comparison with. So I've done a comparison and um, ceiling optimizes less for size than GCC by default if you use OS, but in depth video there, I was surprised myself and with OSET, ceiling optimizes more for size. Um, but for C++, I was surprised how slow ceiling was, also extensive benchmarking video stuff, uh, previous videos. And I wanted to check actually, because if you compile ceiling with GCC, the size optimization, it becomes significantly slower. Was it 60% of something, previous videos, quite a lot, from 60 minutes to 24 minutes or something, um, whatever percent, percentage that is. And I actually wanted to check if uh, how, how fast ceiling is if you compile ceiling with ceiling with OS and not OZ because the ceiling OS is not as aggressively size optimizing. So it's more if it hurts performance too much, it's it's still optimizing uh, much more than GCC. So I wanted to check if my whole ceiling musical distribution optimized with OS with ceiling still has reasonable performance because otherwise I certainly don't want to have a 60% slower ceiling. Um, Appstream sources need patches to allow um, using all sets. Some um, goes for what do I mean patches? Can you not just supply Cflex equals all set? Should that not work? I would think um, BSD side it's greatly reduced open BSD kernel with Patrick, um, but it did because no one wanted to recompile. These lessons are what motivated to continue working on this project. Keep up the great work. Yeah, that is cool. Um, yeah, so I, by the way, did I, I did not build, oh, wait a second, I, I translated OS to OZ because OZ, OS didn't have as much an effect actually in T2. I, Hard coded translated size optimization to OSET and ceiling. Um, fun fact that makes me wonder whether I built my kernel with OSET though. Um, you would actually do this, turn off unneeded nodes. That is cool, good to know. Thanks for sharing. What are your thoughts on this CC though? Um, I used this CC in the past. Uh, with slow machines like Spark and PowerPC, even like cross the CC, having a cross compiler on a Mac Pro and have the uh, Spark, the 360 or 200. Initially, I even had 270 megahertz Spark, later 360 megahertz Spark, and the CC that. But nowadays, um, as you see, uh, the yesterday even two parallel builds didn't load the cores all too much. So this CC for me not too much use. I uh, well. Or, yeah, because um, this, the configure stuff is serialized, not not running in parallel. So I have too many time slices of serialized configure stuff. And um, that is why I probably don't really need, if I, well, unless of course you native compile uh, this for compiling, um, for compiling Firefox on PowerPC, that could actually be helpful indeed. Um, but then we also have to deal with Rust and all this stuff nowadays. Some to fit. So let's reinstall this again because we can never test too much. I hope this time this log in. I just reinstalled it completely just for the test of it. Let's maybe create a new file system with better FS right now. That worked. Install. Um, by the way, if you want to uh, if you want to compress this a little bit, then just go to another console and mount target. Remount with compress LZO or something um, before installing, obviously, because it only compresses installed files. Um, by the way, right now, if you want to boot from this, you can only use LZO, I think. Otherwise, it supports set standard, I think, but you can't boot this with Grub right now, maybe, unless they added support for set standard in Grub recently. Um, so many comments in the audience. How oh, should I work with so many comments? Um, watching the videos, wondering 2019, what's good way to get started programming you see for someone with only some basic programming concept knowledge? Um, good question. Um, some small hobby project of yours, maybe some small thing that you want to quote. The question is, of course, um, what you want, what you're interested in. 
Um, I always recommend to do what you're interested in. And uh, whether you want to go kernel or not kernel, if you are not going kernel, maybe C is not the best language to learn nowadays. Um, maybe then something like Rust or Rust, maybe Swift, although Swift probably not as popular in open source. Um, and yeah, totally depends what you want to do. If if you want to do something, website stuff, then certainly JavaScript anyway, or even WebAssembly native code stuff. But otherwise, yeah, if not web stuff, then maybe Rust, Go, or Swift. I would probably as much, because um, just, uh, wait a second, did we? Ah, so this boot, so this is with the new modified grub stuff, so this works now. Um, let's see if we have logged in now. Hey, now we have logged in, whatever fluke that was. I totally no idea why. Does it also work? Yes, it works. <laughs> we can release this ISO. Um, let's maybe test this a little bit more. Um, yeah, so only you see uh, with this help of this videos, otherwise I would earn nothing with this. I earned the super chat donation, totally amazing, plus some AdSense revenue. That is already totally much better than nothing. Um, did I start with DH client? I just run it for testing, usually just DH client here. That also worked. Let's test uh, source. So if you want to build T2, then check out HTTP or S, whatever you want, maybe for less. Okay, let's, let's use this and I can commit from here. And um, if you want to emerge more stuff like Denizen at home, like Xorg and other fun stuff, there's so many people watching today, that is slightly frightening. Um, yeah, so for programming, maybe Rust or Swift go more future-proof and um, and maybe also C++, um, although it's a little bit more vintage, um, still not too bad, but if others have comments in the audience, um, feel free to comment. Um, start with some tutorials. Oh, okay, these are uh, learning two things at once. I understand Rust, so have a ton of languages and compilers. Um, yeah, Turbo Pascal, I can't recommend too much. Actually, fun fact, I started with Turbo Pascal um, there with my neighbor. Um, as Yeah, so I think I started with Turbo Pascal and my neighbor with Turbo Assembler and we did not even know each other. And so when we eventually uh, met somewhere, um, I knew Turbo Pascal, he knew Turbo Assembler, and then uh, I teach him Turbo Assembler, and he teach me. Uh, I teach him Turbo Pascal, he teach me Turbo Assembler. I think it was that way. I guess. Um, and then later we need, we figured we need C, and then we we switched to C. Um, I know it was a joke. I only wanted to say fun fact. I started with Turbo, uh, Turbo Pascal. I would totally not recommend it. So. Um, but however, one thing that was of course more usable were strings, right? You couldn't do so much string str all because strings in C certainly are hard, and that is why we have probably 50% or more of the security vulnerabilities with all the buffer over under runs and stuff. Um, Rust is good for this, but getting Rust installed on Windows is a pain. That is interesting because uh, as much as I like Rust, the one thing I don't like with Rust is the cargo ecosystem and this promotion of piping the web shell script download stuff into your shell for remote code execution as it's fine, it's totally not a fan of this. And the Rust people always tell me, no, cargo is amazing and all the Rust up stuff is amazing. And I'm totally surprised to hear that it's maybe not amazing on Windows, but um, yeah, whatever. So T2 check out the only... so. As this is a GCC glibc based system, we can just run the config of T2 like that. However, um, by the way, does config no, does not exist to so MKD. Um, if probably I change um, T2 because so if you if you run the config like this, it will create a new one with some defaults that only work if you run a GCC glibc based system. So it is better style to MKD config and copy cpr the sde config so the the config of t2 that was used to build the iso is included in the install that is this so you can copy this to default and then you have the same config that is mostly important for doing musel ceiling stuff um, probably i will change the config 
to do this by default, most likely. So um, this, I just like this week, I figured for all the new people who might want to try T2 at home and play along at home and tinker and stuff, especially with ceiling and usual and power PC and stuff, it's probably best that we make this a little bit more error, uh, f uh, error less error prone. Um, as you see, so now we have here minimal uh, install, Pentium, all what we used here to build. And uh, also parallel, fun fact, parallel stuff. So we don't have 16 cores here. So let's change this to two or whatever I used to boot here. And the only thing you probably want to do then is change this from no package pre-selection template um, because otherwise I guess the eMerge doesn't have all the packages. That is probably the only one, only thing you probably want to do. Or maybe also raise the optimization to uh, core i9, whatever you might have. And then it's eMerge, um, maybe, let's see how much would Xorg server. So the only thing is the dependency resolution is a little bit rough. So because T2 is not optimized for this Gen2 like Gen2 uh, eMerge stuff, um, it requires a little bit of um, manual guidance. So for example, to avoid excessive dependencies getting here into this, and yeah, we have to optimize this also. Um, to do more better dependency uh, resolution because in T2 we don't hard code dependencies. So the dependencies are automatically generated from headers and libraries used during the build and we store them in .cache files to have them for users to um, emerge at home. And not only are they not the most up to date, they sometimes include stray dependencies. So sometimes you get too many dependencies because it, it used some header files that belong to Xen or, or it, it just tested for header files for Xen and didn't even use it. There is such stupidity exist. And you see it started to build here the PNG already free type. Um, there might be one or another uh, package not building, like a dependency not missing. It can then, yeah, for example, this is a stray dependency. This kind of stuff is also on my to-do list, like MTST. It was just touching using there some stupid file like MT or whatever bullshit doesn't really matter much, but I will optimize this in the future. So now with uh, all the uh, regain popularity here, especially PS3, uh, Octane, uh, Musil and all the other fun stuff, I will optimize these dependencies over the next month. Also, I actually, fun fact, I already did this um, when I emerged uh, like on the Sony VIOP, on the Octane, on the P3, I already updated some stuff. Um, yeah, here, for example, some gperf. So, for example, font config. This is also maybe let's let's cancel this. So, if you have like gperf missing, I slightly wonder why. But here, you see now, you, this is this is why over the last decade we have not optimized it as because the developers they can see okay, well, j, j, uh, j perf is um, I think this is perfect hashing or something um, missing. Yeah, fine, just edit. You see, not a big deal. This is why, yes, it is a little bit more raw, but yeah, raw, raw like sushi, right? This is how we like it. Um, not over design it, keep it stupid simple. But yeah, I understand for normal Joe users, it's annoying and we will further improve this. So for example, what we can do is when font config built here in probably a minute, and yes, most likely this is a new dependency. So the cache file is old, a couple of years old, maybe. We should also more automatically update this actually, which a decade ago we have done more often just the last decade it wasn't as desktop centric here. It's a, we mostly used it for data centers, virtual machines, embedded stuff, and it was just not necessary for us at all. So what I do now is cancel this again and go to xorg font config and copy here the cache file from var ADM cache. By the way, I hope it's, yeah, it's a little bit small. I hope it's somewhat readable. Let me check here. Yeah, I think it's somewhat on the screen and font config here to font config cache and um, all the t2 meta data information like installed file list and everything is in var adm this is historic rock linux choice or maybe of some other distributions i don't know um sano irx i have no idea um so font so for example flist if you want to know what files font config installed then this is in var adm flist and if you want, um, there's also MD5 sums, which we eventually should upgrade to something else. So here, MD5 sums of all the files and probably mine j font 
config should check. For example, mine j should uh, y not j mine y is check the files for modification. So some other package might have some. Is this all? Yeah, without something is all. So some files. Okay, this is a debug package. This should actually should not should uh, should not be in there. And then some files were modified, like fstep and stuff. Obviously. Um, and resolve cont.conf. So yeah, this thankfully works. But again, um, I know there are some imperfections. And yes, I also know that MD5 sucks in the meantime. Um, I already upgraded the source check sums to char 200 whatever something, something whatever. Um, and we will also migrate this to whatever. But if we change this, we need to adapt quite some uh, places, so um, including the installer and stuff. So this is not a one-day task; it's a, a weekend task to get all the stuff working. This is why I've not done this yet the last years. Um, what else do we have easier said than done? What are we? Um, more standard. Detail also wants to get into Rust. Um, Was this hard to use this power PC? Just avoid standard if you're writing a kernel with that. C is a nice language to get started and C later. So let's supreciate the abstraction and tools. Yeah, the questions, I mean, C is of course a little bit difficult with all the pointers and especially on the string side. Um, I agree that it's good to know how PCs or computers work, um, how CPUs work. I'm just not sure if starting with C is really the best thing. Um, maybe starting in C++ is not the worst thing to not to get frustrated with pointers and strings too much. And maybe, but yeah, I understand the different viewpoints of everything has pros and cons. Um, fitting a square, uh, pick into the round hole. Use zero build up from there. What kind of version are you using? Do you me? me do you mean me or which kind of version going on things like instead you whatever? What's the need to get practical? I given up on things like that. What do you mean with and stick to? Um, I need IDE and certain MCUs here, not available on Linux here, totally understand. Uh, calculate SHA-512 is faster and use less footprint on X than SHA-200 are really interesting. Um, I mostly didn't want to have the checksums too long, so I used SHA-256 or even maybe I even used the truncated version like 200 whatever, something for now. But I already added support. In T2 is already support for maybe any char. I think I um, I switched this on the length. So based on the length of the checksum, you can already use any or prefixes with some um, hash in the digits, like like curly braces, char something, uh, but whatever. Um, and holds memory addresses, so pointers and the tools. Yeah, okay, so um, getting a little bit sidetracked there. So updating this, so if we take a look, um, SVN diff here, so this is uh, unfortunately adding MTST, slightly wondering why is it adding MTST, so that would be deb, uh, deb debug, yeah, deb, why did I delete this already when I typed this correctly? Add this, uh, not MTST, uh, font config, and why is this depending on MTST user bin? Yeah, so you see, apparently, really, this stupid font config was running MT for some really stupid reason. Um, and this is why it automatically depends on this, so that might actually be correct. Let's take a look at var id in log font config bin. MT, it's not directly visible though. Hmm, I need to analyze this another day more. Um, so xorg, so it, so this font conf, so it actually, funnily enough, 
removed. Where is our gperf? Why is gperf not in there? I updated this for gperf and it's not in there. Um, oh, wait a second, it's in there. Did I... Wait a second, this means it was in there already. Ah, this, ah, okay, it might have been already in there. Okay, this is our, because we only do one level dependency resolution, actually. Um, so, yeah, also, actually, the cache file was not too old. Um, so, yeah, this was, okay, then we revert the stuff. Thanks so much to not updating. Oops. Yeah, this is how you emerge some stuff that works for the most part. If there is some dependency missing, then just edit. And um, yeah, maybe let us know on the mailing list. So this now works a little bit um, more. This, by the way, is the relatively latest, yeah, 5 to 15 from yesterday. And um, so probably shut down this VM now. I really like uh, this new style, though. Um, other one. Yeah, also this, eventually I need to, this RC stuff is only for... Uh, Musil, um, this this RC reset signal stuff. There, I probably need to find you this another day. Then, uh, still so many people. Yeah, probably that is long enough for today. Thanks again for the super chat for hanging around here. I will copy this ISOs to the download server. Um, the x86 one is tested. The x is the, the 46, the AMD 64 one, um, not tested. Um, might work or might not. It should be identical mostly. Um, just that I haven't personally tested this EFI booting right now. If you, it should work for Danny if you are still here. It should work if you, um, if you just copy this to a EFI readable file system. It should boot, I think. Um, by the way, we could probably uh, check if, or wait a second. Let's, you know what? Let's let's try this here live on. Can we, how could we, yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's at least mount this here, the x86, what, x86 CD1, I saw this, is, yeah, I built this to MNT or so, okay, the fun fact, I think historically you need to add, to add dash o loop, I think this is a new feature of core utils also of the last years only that you don't need to uh, specify or loop manually anymore. MNT um, boot and that should be, oh wait a second, right, this is not so right, okay, this can't work, good, that I checked this, this should of course be an EFI boot so much to and MNT, let's we built this so much to it should work. Of course, it never works without testing. Uh, how many drop frames do we have, by the way? Hey, zero drop frames. Also amazing stuff. Arch, that was x86. Oh, Arch, not target. x86 boot. Uh, something. Boot in. So for EFI, that should be, what did we even call this? So that should be somewhere here. So if EFI then, yeah, also identation, not perfect, but whatever I didn't, or maybe we ident the first one and whatever that it looks at least somewhat, yeah, whatever, maybe that is good enough for now. Don't always like to re-indent all the blocks. Just adding here some conditions. So MK dear P. Um, where would the so ISO dear? So that would be that. ISO dear, and that should be EFI boot. And then we want to write um, boot grub. And that should be ISO dear. Actually, I've, I've, wait a second, this is funny here. This is of course not correct. That should be if he either boot or did I really use boot? Boot X. 
did I use? Probably should work, right? Um, this also explains. No. <laughs> okay, let's rebuild this ISO and see what happens. Oops, so. Yep. VMware, what does bothers me? Um, for the stream, hopefully, if testing this goes well. So, yeah, uh, welcome everyone. Um, works in wine and be safe some sort of for rebooting. Size of and things to work, no stays on making things work because of might have nothing wrong with being multi OS user. Yeah, totally agree. The inverse does on me though is that I have to wait additional 20 seconds for booting the slave OS. Yeah, um, so. Um, let's put ISO again. Good, so that I took a look. Um, would have already been the first ISO published and uh, not working. So there, MMT, AFI boot, boot x64 AFI. I think that should have been the right, or should it not? Um, let's see what happens here. What I wonder a little bit though. Read the can this thing not read ISO image maybe? Yeah, I had it in boot and that was boot x64. If is this what I was using? Actually, that is funny. I have here this. Um, should I use the grub prefix of if you boot? Would this be convenient to have this side by side? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not, I guess. Um, so boot x64, is this what I was using or not? Architecture x86 boot, boot in, boot x64, oops. Boot x64 if you so I have intentionally have this lower case. I hope that should work. Hopefully, but it's in fat anyway, right? So whatever. I think so did we had mounted this. Um was there some create xfs from if we Okay, maybe the stream is getting too long anyway. I guess that's in enough for today. Maybe we commit this already. That should mostly work. Architecture x86 boot. Just a couple of extra spaces here and there. So yes, this is also not yet perfect. This later needs to be conditionalized properly on some configs, which right now I have hard coded for 32-bit uh, MS master boot record MBR. And otherwise, if we, we can later change this if we feel the need to have more flexible options there. Um, started support for bootable x86 64 if need to test this with real hardware or something sometime soon. Uh, or, yeah, or VMware that certainly has support for um, if we. What else do we have here? LVM. So many comments. You said you are writing your own kernel. Interesting. Can you share? Uh, so for the Unix, the default, it's 
is the default ceiling algorithm included with Xcode good enough to get started with doing C? Yes, of course it is. Uh, Apple is only using C length for quite some time already. So yeah, it's a relatively normal full-featured C compiler. Um, the subsystem hall actually no six. Or should I install generic LLVM? Uh, you probably don't need this. Um, well, it depends what you do, but I think even with ceiling of Apple's Xcode, you probably should be able to build freestanding library, uh, freestanding binaries if you wanted to, but probably you want just to run native binaries on your OS anyway. That is good enough for if you run this on Mac OS. Take everything POSIX and toss it out of the window. What's your target platform arm and yeah, we are in, I'm also thinking about microkernel, right? And I would probably, to be able to run normal like legacy application, I would make it like somewhat POSIX compatible, but of course all the microkernel stuff um, like do there some kind of own development and research. Um, also for actually even prototyping with some like nice native graphics stack because some of it is a little bit lacking in the open source space. Of course, we have 3D graphic, but with frame buffer, um, kernel mode setting, DRM, libdrm, and stuff. I would, if my microkernel stuff, I wouldn't do it like this. I would have only one graphic subsystem, one graphic subsystem to rule them all. Um, not all this mess that we have there. Um, RF51 morons actually doing it. Yeah, I've seen that fun stuff. Um, also, I hope nobody gets hurt, obviously. And have you seen the Navy or whatever people who confirm that? Um, UFOs are real, unidentified flying objects or phenomena. Anyway, um, being worth some weight, uh, things being worth some weight for usability too. I, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't forget, not that people get overhyped. Uh, T2 is like totally mostly vanilla upstream sources with the most minimal patches to get stuff working needed so it's intentionally raw like sushi just how we like it and some manual stuff and debugging and tinkering required um, yeah so this part of desktop is most of it infrastructure typo is so leave it red hat on my main internet I leave red uh, by, by the way uh, test this in some VM or additional partition. Don't ruin your data, make a backup. Don't blame me if you lose your data, if you delete everything else and can't do work anymore. You have been warned. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah. So um, that's it for today. Stream is long enough as usual. A whopping 1 hour 50. How late is it already? Probably too late because, yeah, certainly nearly. Um, based on the ISOs you can have time yeah um, only for you and to share it because you see I'm already overloaded right but I need to uh, or maybe drop me an email with some details you want to share um, stopping either in some weeks or next months depending on my family affairs um, at you on site and um, rich rich. yeah so if you, Danny if you have a laptop ready to play uh, it's an EFI based laptop right I hope or if it's not EFI based you could use a 32 bit because I decided we have already too many options with MIPS, Octane, um, PS3, Embedded ARM, uh, HPP Arisk I don't really want to build too many hybrid images so master boot record for old fashioned 32 bit x86 and EFI 4 modern 64 bits, so I hope it's iffy, but even the Sony Vario is or Apple stuff. Anyway, um, maybe should I test my MacBook is partially broken anyway from this stupid Catalina install that is broken. Maybe I even try, try to test boot it there. Anyway, um, so yeah, maybe I copy this tomorrow or something because maybe I test this actually can copy the 32 bit anyway uh, maybe I copy them now and call it a day um, yeah especially as I want to sh shut down the um, server in the office to save some energy because only one planet here and uh, hope to see you soon for the next videos to come and then more more interesting videos again if we are done with well we have still the other architectures to build power PC MIPS so uh, some more 
fancy testing to come, but that's some story for another day. And I hope to see you then for all the next fun stuff to come.